Um, thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate your time and we know that this is incredibly busy as you all are going to be here in two weeks, which is just incredible. Um, we can't, uh, for the staff, we just can't believe how fast the time has gone from the moment that we started working with you all until now, it just has flown by. So we um, wanted to connect with you before you got here just to go over some last minute details that you would probably want to be aware of before you got here, as well as address any questions that you may have that is, is on your mind. And we know that you've been working really hard with your program partners, um, and so we're just going to continue that conversation here today. Okay, great. So um, agenda, this is what we're going to hope we hope to cover in the next hour or so. Um, I want to definitely go over some of the scheduling pieces. Um, we want to talk about the opening seminar, some of the key activities, what you should be prepared for for the first week that you'll be in Philadelphia. And then talk through some of the expectations and fellowship outputs for, for the time that you'll be here with us in the U.S. and beyond. And then lastly, we're going to talk about uh, sustainable sustainability, personal sustainability, which is one of my favorite topics to talk about. And please feel free, if you have questions during this time, to just raise them. You can put it in the chat box, um, and we can definitely stop to discuss that. I want this to be a dialogue. Great. So you will be in the U.S. for seven weeks, and the time frame generally is the first week is, is going to be orientation. You'll be in Philadelphia. Um, for opening seminar. And then after that, there will be five weeks of travel involved. And I'm sure that, I'm hoping that this is review for many of you. So just going over this one more time to prepare your mind for when you're going to be here because it will be quite an intense experience. So five weeks of individual and group experiences traveling throughout the U.S. Thankfully, there will be a mid-program retreat in beautiful Sedona, Arizona. You'll also um, travel with your peers to the Grand Canyon. It's a very refreshing time, and many people enjoy the opportunity just to take a breath, um, to think, and to connect with yourself and connect with your peers. At the end of this very five-week intense travel, you'll come back to Philadelphia um, for what we call closing seminar. And it's a basically time to wrap up and to process what you have just gone through in the last six weeks. And then we'll close with what we call annual day, which is a time of the year that um, it's, our biggest, it's our biggest day. We um, come together with a seminar. Uh, General Powell will be with us in the spring, and it's a very um, opportun great opportunity to engage with those who have been past fellows and those who are on our board of trustees and those who are in the EF family and supporters. So that will all take place in Philadelphia at the end of your fellowship. Okay, great. Um, so now I just want to briefly talk about opening seminar and what's going to be happening for that first week. I know there are some people who really like to pre be prepared and want to know what is happening. So um, you'll get a detailed schedule when you arrive. But for now, these are some of the key activities that will be happening that you might want to be aware of. So on Sunday evening is going to be our welcome reception. This is going to be quite casual. Most of you will be coming off the plane, coming from the airport. Um, so feel free to come to the hotel, check in, um, come to the 33rd floor of where we will all be staying, or where you will all be staying, and um, meet us for snacks, drinks, desserts, um, light, light chatting, meal and just a time to um, put faces to the names and, and meet people. Okay, so that's Sunday evening. And then Monday will be spent mostly at the EF house. So this is going to be orientation. You're going to meet with your program, uh, program officer and program associate or assistant and you will go over 
your schedule for the in, for the entire trip and they'll connect with you about the important things that you need to know about. You'll also be meeting with our president, George DeLama. This is something that he loves to do. He um, usually meets with two fellows at a time and it's just this quick face-to-face. -face. He just wants to hear from you about who you are, your backgrounds, and what your aspirations are for the fellowship. So this is just a, a way to personalize some time with our president. Uh, another important thing that's going to happen that Monday is you'll be given your phones. So everyone is going to be given a smartphone, which is, people say it's their lifeline for when they're on fellowship. It's going to have your itinerary. Um, so that you know where you're going every day. Um, so it's really important to not lose the phone, hang on to it, and um, and just, yeah, keep it with you at all times. People actually go through withdrawal at the end of the fellowship when they have to give it up. It's, it's quite difficult. So, um, and then another important thing is you'll be given your money for, for um, the fellowship that day. So another thing you don't want to lose. Okay, other key highlights moving forward. Tuesday, um, I just want to point out that this is a time where you will all be given about three minutes each to introduce yourself to your entire group of peers. So all the fellows will have a chance to, um, to tell their very brief story. So you might want to be thinking about that. How are you going to present yourself to your peers? Um, and then uh, after that, we will have a workshop. And in the evening, we'll have a guest speaker. I'm also telling you this so you have a general sense of your time and when, when you will have some free time, downtime. So Tuesday evening, we do have activity. Um, Wednesday. I hope that you have all been having robust discussions with your program partners about your project. Um, that's something that we really um, had emphasized this program, that we wanted fellows to be thinking more about their project before they came to the U.S. to partake in, in the fellowship. So Wednesday morning will be a time for you all to present where you are with your project um, development. And it will also be a time to get feedback from staff and from peers about where you might want to go as you explore the fellowship, as you have conversations with people. Uh, that evening, we will also have a special guest and a program. And then Thursday, we will have a panel on a very important topic that I'm sure you're eager to hear about um, on immigration. And um, actually, I'll just, I'll just quickly mention Wednesday evening, the program is going to be talking about the first 100 days of um, the Trump administration. And I'm sure you're all going to be very interested and curious to hear what, um, what we have to say and what our thoughts are on that. And we love your feedback. Um, love to have a really robust dialogue and conversation around that. Um, and then Friday is your last day in Philadelphia for the opening seminar. Um, so you will be going out for meetings in Philadelphia. And then that evening, we'll, we will have a send-off reception at the EF House before you all head off. So let me just pause for a moment to see if there are any questions so far on the logistics and some of the scheduling. Um, no questions from me so far. Okay, thank you. Can I have a very simple question? Yes, Liam. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, are we going to open a bank account or something like that? So no, you won't be opening a bank account. We will be giving you um, cash, and you'll yeah. be given credit cards. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I'm actually going to go into a little bit more detail about that um, later on in this in the presentation. So hold the hold that conversation, and we will discuss more. But thank you. It's a great question. Okay. Anyone else for now? Okay. So, okay, so I um, wanted to talk about a little bit of the flow of what's going to happen in the five weeks that you're out on travel. So you're going to have individual meetings 
for the most part, right? This means that um, your program partners have worked to set up meetings that you have identified, some we have identified, we've researched together. Um, you're going to be meeting with leaders in your field. And the meetings that you're going to have, there's an expectation that you all, as fellows, drive the agenda. Okay, so when you come in, you want to be prepared. You want to have read up about the person that you're going to be meeting and your program partners, we will provide you with all of this information. So it's really going to be up to you as to how you present yourself, as to how you present Eisenhower fellowships and as to how you engage with them in the conversation. So there's a lot that um, you can do to really get the most out of those meetings. And um, the best thing to do is be prepared, right? So you can spend time um, in advance of that meeting the night before preparing, going through materials, and setting your mind, setting your intention for what you want to get out of that conversation. The other thing is um, perhaps you have talked about this with your program partners, um, but it would be helpful perhaps to come up with a list of questions, general questions, again, about what are you, what are you trying to learn from um, the people that you're meeting with, just so that you can be clear in your mind. And this is part of the preparation as well. Um, so perhaps you have five or six questions, general or specific questions that you would like um, to ask them. And of course, it can be tailored to the specific person, but it can be used as a baseline so that you, um, that you can feel prepared because you're going to be meeting with so many people. Um, so you definitely want to have something in your back pocket that you can use. Okay, um, you will also be having joint appointments. This may be a meeting between an expert and one additional fellow. Uh, because there are many common interests and common fields that you are bringing into this fellowship with your peers, uh, it, is, it is quite likely that you will be involved in joint appointments. So we just ask that, um, you know, be practical about this. You want to be mindful of sharing the conversation with your peer, with your other fellow that is in the meeting with you. And perhaps it can help to actually talk in advance to, if you know that you're going to be meeting with another fellow and this expert, you might want to connect with your fellow, fellow, in advance of that meeting and, and just say, hey, this is what I'm hoping to get out of this meeting. What do you need to get out of this meeting? And just being mindful of sharing that conversation, of sharing the time. And if you sense that you're talking too much, maybe it is pulling back and allowing your peer fellow to have a chance. Or if you feel that you're not talking enough, maybe it's a matter of um, asserting yourself, although I doubt any of you will have that problem. So, um, yeah, it's just being mindful of sharing that conversation in a respectful way. So group activities, there will be several group activities, especially when you are in a city at the same time and you're, and you're traveling um, in a group. So this is going to definitely happen in Washington, D.C. Um, this is going to be happening in San Francisco for sure. Um, so we might have arranged activities for you where there is a special trustee dinner or a get together with other USA fellows. And this is a great bonding opportunity for you to connect with your peers that you're traveling with, um, as well as those who are in the broader EF family. So these are the, the type of general engagements that you will be having. Okay, project development, I've talked about this a bit already. So I um, just want to emphasize that this is a direction that our organization has taken in the last several years, was to introduce a project component to the fellowship experience. Um, we ourselves as an organization, we're looking to bring about real world impact. And our strategy on carrying this out is through working with all of you so that you are not just here traveling for this amazing seven-week experience, which is going to be transformative in and of itself, but that when you go back home that you have something in your, in your toolkit to be able to make the kind of change that you've always been thinking of and that you've been working really hard to achieve. And 
it is our aspiration that the people that you meet, the connections that you build, the worldview that you develop while you're here, that all of these pieces will transform you and allow you to go home and have a great impact at home in your own society. And so that's why we've been emphasizing so much, um, helping you to think through your project in a very concrete and tangible way, because that is what we are hoping to measure. And it will not be measured six months after you um, leave here, but maybe it will be measured 12 months. Maybe it will be a longer term impact. Um, and it's something that we will be discussing heavily while we are, while we are with you for your fellowship. And I hope that's very exciting for you. Um, so reports from the road. This is just our weekly check-in. We'll be asking you to um, send us a very brief report. There's a template. We make it as easy as possible. And it's a way for you just to reflect on what has happened in the last week of your travels. And it's a good way for you to be grounded in um, just reminding yourself to stay focused but also um, have the freedom to explore. Um, at the end of the fellowship, before you go home, we will be asking you to submit a project report. And this is really important. Sometimes we won't let you go home unless you submit your project report. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm totally kidding. Uh, but it is, it's super important. And again, just because of the emphasis on the project development, piece of it. This is something that we really, uh, really want to work with you all on doing and doing well. And then lastly, we will be asking you to keep in mind um, the meetings that you've attended and to provide your analysis on them. So we'll talk to you about this when you get here, but simply just a scoring system so that our, our program staff know um, whether or not it was worth the time to meet with a specific person and whether or not we want to send other fellows to them in the future. So as you go through this process, you might want to be taking notes, you might want to have a journal with you so that you can write down your thoughts and that so that at the end of the fellowship, you're not um, trying to jog your memory of what happened five weeks ago, because that could be quite hard. Okay, so before I go on to the finances piece, I'm going to stop again and see and take any questions that might have come up. I'll go back here. No questions? Okay, and I see Tia has joined the webinar. Hi, Tia. Yes, hi, Romana. I'm How okay. are you? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm doing great. Good. I'm glad you're here. Good. Yeah. I just want to find out, uh, will you be providing us a template for the end of fellowship project report? Um, we will provide guidance for that report. Yes, we will. But it, it perhaps won't be a template, but more so guidance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great question. All right. Okay, so we can go on and talk about the finances. Uh, we will have an in-depth meeting with our finance staff so that they're going to be able to answer questions. But at this point, I don't want to overwhelm you with the details. I just want to give you a general sense of how the money is going to work. Okay, so your program partners will work with you and show you the, actually I think the finance staff is going to show you your average stipend. So if you're coming on your own and you're not bringing your spouse or partner with you, the average amount of um, stipend or per diem that you will get is probably between three and four thousand dollars US total for this time. Okay, so um, this includes monies for food, includes money for transportation. So perhaps you know, you'll be taking a cab from the airport to your hotel when you arrive. Um, it also includes transportation money for in-between meetings um, to get you on either public transportation, Uber, Lyft, cab, etc. So that's what it covers. It's really meant for your daily living um, costs, okay? 
So just keep that in mind. That's how we built the amount. Um, and it's based on federal government guidelines of what's allowable for this, what we call per diem rate. Okay, so when you arrive that Monday, you will be given $500 US cash, and you'll be given credit cards with your per diem on it. If your spouse or partner is coming with you, that amount that is extra will be put on about halfway through the program. Okay, so um, the other thing I want to mention is that your reimbursement, if you paid service fees and your visa fees, that will happen at the end of the program. So generally, I think that's maybe uh, 300 something US, between 300 to 500 US, depending. Okay, and what I wanted to emphasize is that you, depending on your personal level of comfort of how much cash you would like to have on you, first of all, you should always carry cash for emergency, okay? So if your credit card is not working for whatever the reason, or if they don't take credit cards, you should always have with you some form of cash, okay? Obviously, you don't want to be carrying around $500 of U.S. cash. Um, you want to be locking that in the safe in your hotel, um, but you definitely want to have cash with you. Always have cash as a backup, okay? Um, also, again, if you are used to a higher level of spending, um, please feel free to bring your personal credit cards and make sure to inform your bank at home that you'll be traveling to the U.S. so that, that your account is not frozen. Okay. So let me stop and ask if there are any questions so far about this. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and again, we'll have more time to talk about this when you get here. Okay. So personal sustainability, this is my absolute favorite topic to talk about, as I mentioned in the beginning. Um, you know, this is a very intense fellowship. And I know that many of you are incredibly busy people. You might have multiple uh, jobs that you're working on or multiple projects, and you're all very ambitious and very high functioning. That's what makes Eisenhower Fellows who you are. And you'll see that when you come and you're, you're, you meet your peers. Very amazing people in this network. Um, so I do want to talk about, however, just some tips or um, just being mindful of how to take care of yourself when you are here. I've had conversations with fellows where um, uh, I worked, I'll give you an example, and this person shall rename name Wes, um, but you know, he had been traveling for about probably more than halfway through, and he got to a city and he called me and he said, Romana, I don't know what day of the week it is. I don't know what city I'm in. I don't know what is happening. And he was totally exhausted and overwhelmed. And so, um, you know, we talked it through and just made sure, okay, eat something. You have to eat because you are going to be so busy going from meeting to meeting. And you're going to have so much energy because you're going to be talking to all kinds of new people and all these new ideas are going to come but you have to remember to take care of your physical body, okay? So that's eating, sleeping. Um, you know, Ariana Huffington, who is a founder of Huffington Post, this, I find this so interesting. She actually um, sold, she left Huffington Post and she's starting, she has started a new company called Thrive Global. So if you haven't heard about it, you can look into it. And it's about um, just this, her evolution that she took as a person who was, very high powered, very high functioning, high achieving. And now her um, goal is really about how to help people have personal sustainability in this high moving, high functioning world. So you can check her out. She has some really great tips. So in addition to eating and sleeping, um, I'll also say that exercise is really great. Um, last program, we had an all Africa regional program and we had a lot of runners who um, were um, in the fellowship. And we had one fellow who ran two marathons while he was here in the US. He ran the New York Marathon, no, not the New York, I think it was the Chicago and the Boston Marathon. Um, 
So in the midst of all this, he had time to train for his marathons. And I think it's, it was a really key part of what sustained him. Okay. I'm not saying you need to go run a marathon. I'm just saying um, you know, that just this is a tool that could be available to you to sustain yourself physically. Okay, so another element of who we are as people is emotionally, um, our, our emotional state. So um, for, for many people, this means managing your stress and knowing what, what works for you and knowing what your plan of action is if you're feeling stressed out. Okay, so everybody has their own way. Um, it could be tied into your physical well-being. It could be, you know, going out for a run and that helps you to de-stress. It could be, you know, accepting whatever is in that moment. We had a lot of that too. Um, in the last program, I think people really learned how to go with the flow and how to accept challenging situations, knowing that you may not be able to control everything. Um, and then mental, what is your mental state, right? We talked about this high volume of information and stimulation and finding ways to channel that. So maybe it is journaling, maybe it's writing down your thoughts, maybe it is um, you know, recording your thoughts on your device. Um, you know, it could be just whatever, whatever you do to make sure that you are um, finding some way to have peace with all of that. And then lastly, um, spiritual. I think, you know, this is a very broad, way, broad sense talking about this, but what happens for a lot of people when they come on this is um, really being grateful for the opportunity that they have to explore their purpose. Um, you know, some of you might be coming and, you know, you're trying to figure out what's next in your career. Maybe you're trying to change careers and um, that's something that you've been thinking about. Or maybe it is you're loving your career and you want to figure out how to go deeper or how to have a greater impact. I think this fellowship really gives the opportunity for people to deeply explore these questions um, by themselves and then with others. You know, we saw so much of that in the last program with our Africa Fellows. I think people were just so inspired by the caliber of their peer fellows and had so much hope for what they could do when they went back to their continent. And um, so that's what I that's what I mean by in a spiritual sense, finding your connection and your purpose. And that this is just a great way to explore that. So these these four pieces is what I like to call um, you know, holistic leadership. Um, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, uh, how all these things connect and help you to be the leaders that you are. So it's just a matter of being mindful of all of these elements. Okay, so what's next? You're coming in two weeks. I hope that you're all as excited as we are you know, perhaps you're feeling the crunch of how are you going to get everything prepared before you leave. I know there's some of that going on, the mad dash. Um, so I, I hope that you have people around you that can really support you and help you to, um, to have a plan for when you're away. Because as much as it is tempting to stay connected to your home life while you're here, I find that most people get really exhausting trying to manage two lives. So as much as you can, work with people at home, whether in your literal home, um, you know, managing your household or managing things at work. Um, I hope that you all have that support system in place because it will make your time here so much better and fulfilling. So you can think about that and who to ask for help while you're at home. Okay, so arrival in Philadelphia, you're going to be getting an email from your program officers with details on where the hotel is located, you know, taking the cab from the hotel, phone number for your program officer, um, when to meet your program officer, you'll be getting all of that before you arrive. Um, and as I mentioned in the beginning, the reception, uh, the greeting reception, the informal casual reception will be Sunday evening, April 2nd at the hotel uh, where you'll be staying. And then 
Another key date is Monday. That's when you'll have that one-on-one -on -one time with your program partners. You'll get your money so that you feel like you can survive. Um, and you'll get your phones, another key piece for survival during the Eisenhower Fellowships. Okay, so again, wanted to leave it open for any questions and discussion. Anything on your mind at all? Everyone's so quiet. No questions? Any thoughts? <coughs> Salim, did you have a question or want to say anything? Uh, I think I explained everything. <laughs> I have the manual now on my desk. I am reading it at the same time. So. Okay. Plus, your explanation is very helpful. Thank you. Okay, great. I realized I didn't have my webcam on, so I just wanted to say hi and show my face. If you guys want to turn on your webcam, we have room for five more people. So maybe we can have um, a quick meet and greet if you have a webcam and you want to say hi. I see Swati is on. Ramana? Yes. This is to go. I would uh question about like uh, for traveling. Uh and the preparation for example like I I not really know about the weather in, in, in US. Mm -hmm. What should be prepared for it? Sure. But uh, uh, I'm not uh, because I'm still confusing between the Celsius and Fahrenheit, something like that. Yeah. Could you explain more about the weather and then uh, what's the cloth that we have to prepare? Mm -hmm. Great question. How to pack? Yeah. yeah. So today is the first day of spring. Um, I will say that our weather has been very confusing here and that climate change is quite real. So um, we can have a discussion with when you come, especially for those people working on climate change. Um, so the weather right now today is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit and um, we can do a conversion for what maybe somebody, uh, maybe Lauren or Shelly can help me do the quick conversion. Is, um, I would say years are probably going to be the most helpful to you because right now it may be a little bit chilly and you might come with a jacket, but by the time you leave in May, it's probably going to be warmer. So you're, you're coming at a time when we're changing. So um, the best thing to do is pack layers for you to wear. So, um, you know, sweaters. Uh, my favorite article of clothing, I don't know if uh, you all have unique low. Because it's very, you can pack it, you can roll it up and you can just put it in your bag or your suitcase and it, it's very warm. So uh, you can also buy that when you come here too if you don't, ha if you're not able to find it at home. But I would say um, just, okay, Lauren just typed 10 degrees Celsius, Lauren, was that it? Correct. Okay. 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, um, yeah, I would just say that layers is really helpful. Um, and just practical, practical clothing. You will need to have some business casual type of clothing with you. It depends on who you're meeting with and it depends on the sector. So if you're going to DC and you're meeting with uh, federal officials, a suit is probably um, the best way to go if you're going to see folks in the tech space. Tech, tech space is generally a bit more casual. 
um, if you're going to see an NGO, perhaps more business casual. So you want to bring a mix of clothing and you want to be able to, um, you're going to be able to do laundry while you're here, obviously. So um, I wouldn't overdo it. I would try to pack light and I would try to pack items that you can wear um, over and over again. Kegler, does that help? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for your explanations. Sure. Any other questions? If you all have some time, I actually want to hear from you about um, just what you're excited about. So if you want to just. Let us know one or two things that you're really hoping will come out of this fellowship. I think we'd love to hear, and this might be a really great time to connect before, before you come to Philadelphia. Does anybody feel like sharing? I can start. Thank you, Salim. <laughs> Yeah, it's very exciting time. Um, it's exciting, but um, um, now what I'm doing is now I'm trying to read something about Philadelphia. That's why I asked Kerry if she can advise me on this to read something because we will spend, I think, three weeks in Philadelphia. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm sorry, two weeks. So probably we will go outside to see the the, the places and 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 so. What I am doing, I'm, I'm, these days I am trying to prepare a questionnaire. Um, I shared this questionnaire partly with Kerry. Um, what I am going to ask to the people who I'm going to meet, um, I believe it's going to be helpful. Um, and reading something about the US, you know. Yeah, you'll have time in Philadelphia, and actually on Monday, um, you'll, you'll we'll, we'll all take a trip together to the National Constitution Center. So it's a new, it's a newer um, museum in Philadelphia. So you can Google that. I'll just put in the chat box. It talks about the founding. Nation, start our debate. So it's quite enjoyable. Thank you, Celine, for sharing. sharing. Yeah, thank you. How about Diana? Are you still on? She may yes, have I am. Oh, great, Diana. Yes. Yes. Would you like to share um, about what you're thinking, what you're hoping for? For the fellowship? I think I think you pretty much covered everything but personally one of the things I'm looking forward to obviously is um, having a good balance of, of meeting and networking and learning from people uh, as well as exploring the cities and having some some downtime to really connect with the, the places that we're going we're going with and I think that will just make it a more enriching and memorable experience. So um, I'm looking forward to the program. I'm also looking forward to, you know, just different parts of the city and and what it has to offer and, and, and what what we can discover. Yep, absolutely. Sounds very very balanced approach. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's great. Uh, let's see, Tia, would you like to share? Hello. Yes, yes. I am very much excited about uh, how to get a full experience about the agricultural productivity in the United States. So I'm really pretty excited to be able to meet with other people who are in the agriculture sector in the United States. And my especially, I'll be a lot of field activities. So. I will have less with official meetings in offices and conferences, but with 
my colleague agri entrepreneurs on the ground. So I'm excited to see, especially, I'm excited to see crops like mint and barley and hops and all. and to even them to see most of these four crops. That's great. Thank you, and thanks for sharing a bit about your background as well. That is um, Tia's field is agricultural entrepreneurship. So you all will get a chance to learn about him too. If that is new for you, I think you know this is a great opportunity to learn from your your peer. So. Swati, I see you're on. I don't know if you have um, sound. If you're able to talk, we'd just love to hear from you. Say hello, introduce yourself, and talk about um, some of your aspirations for the fellowship. OK, maybe she doesn't have sound. Okay, so Swati, we'd still love to hear if you want to chat, if you're able to chat in the box and let us know. Um, okay, I see your chat. Yeah, if you can, if you want to use, there you go. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I'm reading on behalf of Swati. Yes, you are not audible at the moment. Okay. Um, okay, guys, thanks for chatting with Swati. Yeah, all right. So, okay, while well, Swati figures that out, um, how about Tegu? Would you like to just share a little bit? Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, they what I would do uh, my friends, uh, I could learn from the US experience especially on the education reform and also learn from the other fellows and we can also share uh, our experience uh, the other fellow experience and US experience and uh, at this level, this is a great opportunity to not only learning about the U.S. experience, but also learning from the other fellow experience, uh, and we can share. Great. Yep. There will be lots of sharing time. And actually, that just reminded me that, so the picture, if you guys are looking at the webinar screen right now, um, this is an example of sharing time. So this is a picture at the Grand Canyon um, from the mid-program retreat from last fall when we had the All Africa program. So you can see how happy everybody is and that they've really had opportunity to share deeply with each other and stay connected. So I am sure you will all have similar feelings and experience, which is really exciting. Great. Thank you, Tegu. And one more time, we can try to hear from Swati if she's able to. I know there's like Swati, I know you're trying really hard to speak. Well, um, I'm not sure if it's going to work this time, Swati, so we want to connect with you for sure when we're all in person. Um, yeah, just any other last questions or any other thoughts at this point? And maybe the staff, if you guys want to say anything. Um, before we hop off the webinar.
No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you all, and um, you will be, oh, here we, there's a question. Swati is asking, hi, do we get to know, who do we get to meet once we land? Um, so once you land, you will be taking a taxi cab or a train to the hotel. So unfortunately, there will be nobody to meet you at the airport, um, but you can just very easily grab a cab. Um, which is probably the easiest thing to do and take it right to the hotel. Um, but if you're landing on Sunday that evening, uh, we will be having the reception on Sunday. So we will, the staff will all be at the hotel to meet you at the hotel that evening. And Swati, um, you and I will talk because uh, I'd like to meet with you before then, just so we can get you oriented. But I'll email you about that. Oh. Okay. Great. Well, I want to thank you all for taking the time to be on this webinar. And just to reiterate again, we're very much looking forward to your arrival in two weeks. And um, I hope that you all have safe travels. Please feel to reach out with any questions to um, your program partners. We're here to support you and to make sure that you have the best fellowship experience. So thank, thank you, you all. Obama. Bye. 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 Bye.